Today you're going to learn how to make this bow or any bow. Here today I'm going to show you how to make a bow that you saw in the previous clip. First you'll have your lid. Your lid is determined by the size of your tissue box. So once you've measured the top of your tissue box and you've decided that that's the count you need for your lid, this lid is a 30 by 30. I count inward 10. So you're going to count 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 10. 1, 10. 1, 10. That's how I determine the size of my hole. It does not have to be this big, but usually some of the designs I like to create need to be a little bit smaller, but for this case, since we're not really going to do a design, we're actually going to add a bow. I'm going to make the hole a little larger. And what you'll do is, I've already pre-cut this, but you will fold it in half and you'll cut a little V. And then you will go around the material. Now, yes, I am using my yarn scissors to do this, but I have lost my other scissors, so I'm contradicting myself today. And then once you've cut off the extra, as you can see, I have cut off the extra inside. And if you leave any bubbles or any little bumps, you will need to cut them off because when you get ready to stitch the lid, um, the, the um, bow part to the lid, you want it to be a little bit smoother than you normally would get it because it's going to make a lot easier for you to attach the lid to the bow piece. Okay, now bows. This is the standard, I don't know if you can see the whole thing, I'll try to bend it, of one sheet. This is part of a sheet that I've already cut. And how I determine my bow is I will fold it in half and then I will cut it. So that's how I'll determine my bow. If you want it to be bigger, if you want it to be smaller, then you can always cut off extra later on. But for now, that's how I get that part of it. Now this part of it is where you're going to count here. And you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So from here to here, that's a 10. So I need to count over 10 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now I'm going to cut this extra section here. And I'm going to go all the way to the end. And then this is the width of my bow. Now, depending on the size of the hole, your bow may be wider or it may be a little more narrow. Now, for the part where I told you we're going to fold it in half. You're going to make sure these two sides match up, line up, and are even. And you're going to squeeze it really tight in your hand, kind of like this. And I use my finger to know that I'm accurate. And then you're going to pinch it really, really hard. When you pinch it really, really hard, it's going to look like that. And so I'm just going to cut. See how there's a row there? You can't cut it on that line. Or actually you can if you wanted. And then we're going to cut off this extra. So we're going to make sure that it's the right way. Okay, as you see, I've already made a mistake. Exactly. I didn't pay attention. I cut off the wrong end. So now I'm going to have to cut this part off. And I'm going to have to line it up. And I'm going to have to cut off another section here. So guess what? It's okay to make mistakes. It's plastic canvas. I did that kind of on purpose, but just to show you, it is okay to make mistakes. And you're going to make a lot of mistakes, so it's okay. The bow does not matter the size. And then when you make your bow, you're going to fold it, and that's going to make your little cute bow design. And you're going to match it up with this right here. So this, once you cut all your pieces, 
will look like this. So you can lay them out on the table and you can see your design. So that's how you will know the width of your bow. Now for this purpose, I am not going to stitch a design on the bow or on the lid because it'll make it easier for you to see exactly how to do it and what to do. Now you have a general idea of what it will look like, the layout of your bow. So I have equally matched it up with the hole that I have cut that you previously counted and cut. Now for this purpose, I am not going to do a design on the lid or the panels of the tissue box bow. Or if you want to make a bow for a box for a gift or to put jewelry in, I am not going to do a design because I'm going to let your creativity um, do that for you. But what I am going to do is I'm going to show you how to make the bow for the lid. Now, let's say, for example, you want to make a lid, but you don't want to cut a hole out of it because you want to make it for a gift for someone to go on top of a present or a jewelry box that you want to make. So, don't cut the hole. You would still count in to 10, and you would do your permanent marker design around like we did earlier so that you would know where to put the bow. And then what you would do is once you draw the black permanent marker line, then you would attach the bow pieces, these, and then do your actual design. Reason being is because you'll need to see the avoided spaces. If you do a design on the whole thing and then you add your bow, it's going to cover up some of the space. So it's better to go ahead and attach. For this, I did pink for the attachment and I did white for the outline. So you can get a general idea of what goes where. I've learned over the time how to do a bow and attach a bow. So you're going to get the actual easy step and not have to do it the complicated way I used to do it. Where I would normally not sew this part, but I would fold over this part and sew through three different layers. And once you get to the last bow part piece, it is a pain. So this is the quickie way and you're going to get that technique today. So I've already designed my bow and it's complete and I've done my sides. So now what I want to do instead of trying to attach it to here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here and I'm going to pinch this together like this and I'm going to go inside of it like this. And it's going to be a little hard to pull it through but you can do it. And then I'm going to attach it this way. So now this part is together. So that's the first step of getting your bow attached to your lid. And of course I never have troubles until I do stuff on camera. Okay, so now we've attached the bow together and of course you already have a design here um, so I would just pretend to run my needle through the design there all right so cut that somewhere okay so now you've completed one side of your bow and of course it doesn't look all that fancy because I just kind of stitched a little row around it so you can get an idea of what it would look like once you've added the yarn and here. So now you've completed part of the bow and you've already stitched your inner section here which will make it a lot easier once you attach the bow. Because normally it's complicated this is the quick way and I know I keep saying that because I really want to stress that it took many years for me to get this the way I got it. Nobody helped me. I had to do it many different ways and let me tell you it sucked. So what I would do is of course I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to line it up a little bit so that this part comes back just a hair and I'm going to line up my little squares 
like that. So now, I don't know if you can see, but my squares are lined up. So I'm going to run through here and pull it here. Now keep in mind, this has got a design on it. So you're going to be pulling this through that design. So what you're going to do is you're going to flip it back over this way. And with the design that you've already done for your bow, you're going to run your this your needle through your design like you would here and you're going to come out through another hole. And it doesn't matter where the hole is that you come out of. So this is going to be underneath your design because you don't want to do it on top because when people look in the bow, they're going to see this line. You don't want them to see that. So this would be my design. Then you're going to come to the other side. You're going to stick it through the hole. I'm trying to get as close as I can without it being blurry. And then I'm going to run it underneath my material, my design, whatever. And I'm going to go out another hole. And I think I totally missed. Yep, I did. So, I'm going to stick it through. Okay. And then I'm going to tie it. Normally, I would run it underneath the material design that's already been created, but since I don't have one, so you can use your own creativity, that is how you would attach your bow. So that's kind of the quickie way. Now, if you notice that it's kind of like moves a little, that's okay, because what you can do is take the white string or whatever color you've used, and you can kind of just run it through your bow like this. Sorry. And do it like that, which you wouldn't see it normally, but that's why I chose the pink, so that you can see what I'm talking about. And then run your bow through there. I just want to be complicated today. Alright, and there. So, of course, you wouldn't use pink, but this is just for demonstration purposes, so you can see. So, now it's not going to move there either. But that's the best way to do it. If you do it the other way, that's fine. But if you want to try to sew through three layers of plastic, if you've ever done this before, you know it's complicated. And once you get in a tighter area, it gets harder for you to do. And so that's basically all you have to do, and I would run this under the material. So I hope that didn't sound like a bunch of gibberish. I hope it kind of made sense, but I didn't want to put a design on here because I was afraid that if I put a design on here, then it would distract you from the general purpose of how to attach your bow to your design. So I chose to do it this way instead. See how complicated it is when you try to line it up like that? It makes it very hard to figure out where the holes are. And you might miss some holes or something. So that's why I think my way is easier than trying to do it this way. Because it's really hard to pinch it. Once you get through the first few, it'll make it easier for the rest. So you can do it that way as well. And then you can do it that way. So either way, now you have your bow. And then what I would still do is I would run my needle through the material here. Like this. Can you see through this? And I'd come out the other side. And of course there would be a design, so you're going to stick it in through this, and then you're going to run it through your little design over to the other side, so you can't see it, and then stick it through here, like that, and come back up through here. So now that way your creation, your design, your bow isn't flopping around. But you won't see any of this, of course, because you're going to run it underneath the material so that it looks like that. So now you've got two bows. And once you get it, you can kind of smush it a little like that, and it'll puff up and make your bow. And you always want to do the finished edge because it looks better than if you didn't do a finished edge. So you can do it either way. You can 
complete it and sew it together and then just attach it this way or you can try your best and do it this way whichever way is easier for you me I've learned over the years that's the best way for me to do it so I hope that helped if not I will do a, a little bit better video for you if you comment below and say it didn't make any sense and I need to make another video but I wanted to do it without the design so that you can kind of see how easy it is to make a bow and attach the bow and you'll continue the process you'll take your other two pieces you'll sew them together and then you'll attach them I'll try to attach them real quick if I have enough string to attach them real quick just so you can see what all three sides look like with the bow I know it seems like I'm doing a half butt job on this but it's really not that complicated so I don't want to waste your time with a long 30 minute video when it really just takes like two seconds to do this it really does oops let me hold that down and then voila see how quick and easy it was so now you have your bow so all you have to do is complete your design, stitch it on, and you're done. And now you have your beautiful bow. Now for the outside, as you notice, once we stitched it, you have this little square here. My recommendation is when you get ready to figure out what you want to put right here, make sure you go one row under. So if you start here, I suggest you go one row under like that so that it doesn't show all that blank space see because you've covered it up or you can do it this way and you can go straight into your bow if you don't want to tie the bow down the way that I done then you can do it this way but it takes away from the the bow element the design to see how tacky that looks that's why I attach it the way that I attached it. It's because that looks tacky. So you just really want to stick with going underneath the bow. It doesn't matter how many you go under. Just so that it goes under it. And then that way it looks good. And you can do different designs or colors right here. So. And there you go. Now you've got your little bow. And then like I said, you can fluff them up a little you want them fluffier or if you want them to lay flatter then you just crease them a little more and they can lay flat that just doesn't want to cooperate and then you can have flat bows but I like the fat fluffy bow look better so not that easy not that hard and not that easy it's just your way of interpreting this video so sorry if it seems like I didn't put a lot of thought into it I really did um, because it is a little bit more complicated than you think if you've never done it before but being that I've done it a hundred times and different ways to me I prefer to do it the way I showed you the first time so now for the outside as you notice once we stitched it you have this little square here my recommendation is when you get ready to figure out what you want to put right here make sure you go one row under so if you start here I suggest you go one row under like that so that it doesn't show all that blank space see because you've covered it up or you can do it this way and you can go straight into your bow if you don't want to tie the bow down the way that I done then you can do it this way but it takes away from the the bow element the design to see how tacky that looks that's why I attach it the way that I attached it it's because that looks tacky so you just really want to stick with going underneath the bow it doesn't matter how many you go under just so that it goes under it and then that way it looks good and you can do different designs or colors right here so and there you go. Now you've got your little 
bow. And then like I said, you can fluff them up a little if you want them fluffier. Or if you want them to lay flatter, then you just crease them a little more and they can lay flat. That just doesn't want to cooperate. And then you can have flat bows. But I like the fat fluffy bow look better. So, not that easy. Not that hard. And not that easy. It's just your way of interpreting this video. So, sorry if it seems like I didn't put a lot of thought into it. I really did. Um, because it is a little bit more complicated than you think if you've never done it before. But being that I've done it a hundred times and different ways, to me, I prefer to do it the way I showed you the first time. Now that you saw the kind of video on how to attach the bow, I hope that you understand that I did put a lot of thought into it because if I showed you the way I had done it over the years, you would be so flustered you would just give up. So I've learned that it is easier to make the bows and then attach them. As you see here, if you look inside the bow, you don't see that line I told you about earlier because it's hidden underneath. And see, there it is. You can see those clearly, I'm sure. And then, ta-da! And the reason I said go underneath, because if you notice right now, you can see I didn't go underneath the bow as I told you. I went along the bow and you can see it. And to me, I just don't like that. So I recommend tilting it up a little and going one extra row underneath it. And as you can see, there's nothing nothing inside. You can't even see where I attached it. And see how it is attached here on the framing? It's the same technique I told you earlier. I folded it over and I stitched through three layers, which made it a real pain. So doing it the other way where you're going to automatically stitch this first, stitch these together, and then clamp it together like that would be a lot better. And it still creates the same effect. To get this pattern, all I did was count from this side to this side, and I took away two, because it takes two squares to make this stitch. So all you have to do is count from that side of your bow to that side of your bow, Divide it in half and take two away and draw your little line. So basically what you would do is before you attach it, you're going to take this and you're going to count your rows and then you're going to say, okay, i got to have two squares. So this is going to be it. So when you go to stitch it, these are the two sides that you need. So that's how you get this creation here is by taking out two pieces and just going all the way up your design. Now if you want to make it a stripe design, then you're going to just do every two rows. So you might do these two, and since I came over to you, you're going to go one, two, and here. So see you've got two, skip two, two, skip two, skip two, skip two. So now your design is going to look like stripes. So you can do this, these two, one color, these two, another color, these two, another color, and then you'll have a stripe bow. Or you can do this design, and the stripe bow is the same as this. It'll just be every other row would be a different color, but it would look like this right here. And with that being said, I hope that you learned something today, and I hope you enjoyed this video and how to make and attach this beautiful bow to your creation that you've created. If you liked my video,